Today we're going to do section 8.1 sequences. Question, how would you define a sequence? A sequence, an, is a list of numbers written in an explicit order. For example, an is a1, a2, all the way through an, where a1 is the first term and an is the nth term of this sequence. Let a1 all the way through an be a function with a domain, the set of positive integers in range a1 through an. If the domain is finite, then the sequence is a finite sequence. If the domain is infinite, then the sequence is an infinite sequence. How would you define the limit of a sequence? Let L be a real number. The sequence an has a limit L as n approaches infinity. If given any positive number epsilon, there is a positive number m such that for all n, m is greater than n is greater than m, we have this. Write the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n equals l and say that the sequence converges to l. Sequences that do not have limits diverge. Let's look at example one. Determine whether the sequence converges or diverges. If it converges, find its limit. So let's go ahead and take the limit. So we're gonna take the limit as n approaches infinity of two n minus one all over n. This we can separate into two limits. The limit as n approaches infinity of 2n over n minus the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. This would equal the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 minus the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n. Now I can go ahead and take my limits. I would get 2 minus 0, so it would be 2. The sequence converges because the limit exists. Let's go ahead and look at the sandwich theorem for sequences. If f is a function with a constant value c, then if the limit as n approaches infinity of that sequence equals the limit as n approaches infinity of another sequence, that would equal l. And if there is an integer n for which a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n, which is less than or equal to c sub n for all n greater than n, then the limit as n approaches infinity of b of n equals l. So if the limit on before and the limit after b of n approaches, both approach l, then b of n approaches l by the sandwich theorem. So you'll see the same idea for series in the next chapter with direct comparison. So let's go ahead and look at an example. Determine whether the sequence converges, and if so, find its limit. So the first thing what we need to do is we're actually going to be finding the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine n over n. So what do we know about cosine n? Cosine n, um, its limit oscillates back and forth between negative 1 and 1. So I could start with negative 1 is less than or equal to cosine n, which is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so now that middle function there, we want it to look like the sequence um, cosine n over n. So I'm going to divide that by n. And if I divide that by n, I have to divide everything else by n to go ahead and um, keep my inequality balanced. Okay, so now I'm going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of negative 1 over n and the limit as n approaches infinity 
of 1 over n. We know that this limit equals 0, and this limit also equals 0. So since they're the same, and cosine n over n is in between, we can say so the limit as n approaches infinity of cosine n over n equals 0 by the sandwich theorem. The sequence converges because a limit exists. Let's look at the absolute value theorem. Consider the sequence a sub n. If the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of n equals 0, then the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equals 0. So we would have the negative absolute value of a sub n is less than or equal to a sub n, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of a sub n. If the limit of the first sequence equals zero and the limit of the last one equals zero, then by the sandwich theorem, the limit in the middle has to equal zero. And the sequence converges because the limit exists. You'll see the same idea for the series in the next chapter, absolute convergence. So let's go ahead and determine whether the sequence converges, and if so, find its limit. So we have a sub n equals negative 1 to the n times 1 over n. This is an alternate in sequence. So here we have an alternate in sequence. So we're going to use the formula. for the absolute value theorem. So here we would have negative one over n is less than or equal to negative one to the n times one over n, which is less than or equal to one over n. And then we take the limit of negative one over n which equals zero, and as n approaches infinity, the limit as n approaches infinity of one over n equals zero. So by the absolute value theorem, the sequence converges. because the limit exists. Let's look at the quick quiz for section 8.1. Which of the following is the limit of the sequence with the nth term a sub n equals negative one to the n times 3n minus 1 over n plus 2. So is my limit negative 3, 0, 2, 3, or does it diverge? So take a minute, pause the video, and go ahead and try to figure this out. And you should have had diverges for your answer. And the last thing we're going to ask, and we'll talk about more, is what is a geometric sequence? So a sequence is a geometric sequence. If it can be written in the form a, then a times r, then times a times r to the n, all the way to a times r to the n minus 1, some non-zero constant r, the number r is the common ratio. 
Each term in a geometric sequence can be obtained recursively from its preceding term by multiplying by r. And you should be able to recognize the geometric sequence. You need this for the next chapter, geometric series test. So this is something that you guys have learned before, and you need to be able to recognize something as geometric. So you may want to go back and review that.